I'm here with Kat Kerr, who has found a fantastic way to add all sorts of layers and dimension to these shadow boxes, That's right? That's right. I love adding layers, and this is a great and easy way to do it. Yeah, they're so cute, and you just want to keep looking at them because every time you look, there's something behind, there's something between. So how are we going to get started? Well, we'll start with some uh, craft plastic, mm -hmm. and this is a heavier uh, plastic, and it does come with a protective film on both the front and the back, and I'm just going to peel off the film, and it's really easy to cut. You can use a pair of scissors. Now, you do you always take the film off machine. before you cut? Because sometimes I, I do. do it on, sometimes I do it off. Yeah, I mean, I do kind of get into the habit of taking it off. You don't have to. It's okay. totally up to you. Now, normally, if I was at home, I would be measuring the shadow box that I'm going to be using. But I just want to show you, it's really super easy to cut this plastic, and it doesn't crack, which is wonderful. Cut two pieces to fit the inside of the shadow box that I'm using, as well as one piece to go on top for the cover and um, I assemble a shadow box or you can buy one um, in the store and I just painted it with black gesso let it dry on the inside and the outside and I also took a piece of cardstock and just placed it right in the that's gonna be my bottom layer so I'll move on to um, to the other layers. Um, the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually print up an image onto uh, adhesive back a computer film. And you just uh, place it into your inkjet printer and mm -hmm. uh, make sure that the shiny side is up. And so here I just printed up an image and I'm going to um, apply it to a piece of book text. Cool. So Let me get this out of the way for I you. I will just peel off that uh, protective it's layer. It's a giant clear sticker. It is. And it's super easy to cut. I'll take those scissors again and I'll just cut around it because this is going to be the focal. I love your careful cutting, Kat. You're really, you're really taking your time with it. But I mean, that's the whole part, right? Art should be fun. And if there's any part Absolutely. that isn't fun for you, and if we look at the finished one, you don't need to get every tendril Not of hair. You don't need to do any of that stuff. You can see, even if I just move this over slightly so we can see the outline, it, and you even have cut off oh, part of yeah. the hair. You don't care. I don't care. It's it's nice and fun and easy, and that's yeah. why I'm doing it. So that's ready to go, and then I'll go ahead and start on my, um, on my first layer for the shadow box. So I'm gonna, again, take a piece of this um, clear plastic, mm -hmm. and I wanted to make a stained glass effect. So what I did first was I Print, I drew up a little image onto a piece of paper. But if somebody was a nervous drawer, you, they could do just what you sort of said, which is they could print an image out and use that instead. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'll just take a piece of that plastic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use a paste to outline that design. Super easy to use. This you reminds just... me of my childhood in the 80s uh, with some puff paint, you know what exactly. I mean? Did you ever do that yes. on like shoes and sneakers and all sorts of fun stuff? And you can see it is puffy once it dries. Mm. So it's really nice because we're going to add some porcelain paint. Well, I was gonna say, if you're looking for that stained glass of Effect. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about it being dimensional is I assume we don't have to be a good painter at this right. point because essentially you've created some walls. It's like the leading on stained exactly, glass yes. for your color to sit within. Exactly. And so I'm going to add this porcelain paint and I'm actually Wait a going second. to add. I just have to ask this question. What is porcelain paint and why are you using it on plastic? What I love is that you can use this porcelain paint on acrylic, on glass, on porcelain, whatever you have. And you can use it multiple ways. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you. The first way is I'm just going to take a, a, a popsicle stick and I'm just going to lay it directly to the center. And that's okay. going to give it a nice opaque look. Um, mm. And then I'll take a brush and I'll add the same color into the little triangles that I created. And that gives it some color, but it's a little bit more transparent. So more like stained glass would be. So what you're saying is you would fill the entire center mm -hmm. with the popsicle stick so mm -hmm. that it's a heavier right. coat and more opaque. And then I notice if you'll paint a little bit more, I sure. can see that you're not scared about going like over the edges oh, not at, at all. all. Not you're at not all. nervous or being, and I can, I can tell your <laughs> level of carefulness is akin to my own here. Yeah, which I'm is not you're just having a good it. time. I'm not worried about it at all. And so once I add those mm -hmm. two colors, I'll add a third color. Again, it's a porcelain paint, and so I'll just take a little sponge, one of those cosmetic sponges. I love those for crafting. I don't know who uses them on their face because <laughs> I think they're crafting tools. They're great tools. for so many different things. Um, and as you can see on this one right here, 
I have the three colors. I have the more opaque look. I have the transparent as well as the one with the sponge. And so this layer is ready. I'll let it dry and I'll put it aside and work on the next layer. Okay. okay. Layer one done. I'm layer feeling very accomplished done. right yeah. now. And so the next layer is a little bit... Um, I'll take that for thank you. Thank you so much. The next layer, I'm going to take another piece of that plastic, and I'm just going to add a little bit of gesso. Again, so for people who don't know, gesso as opposed to white paint, what's the difference? Um, it's more of a primer, but I'll be honest with you, you can use white paint here also. It doesn't really matter. The only reason I chose gesso is because it's what I had in front of me. <laughs> okay? So I like to go ahead and scratch it. Mm -hmm. I'm not covering the whole plastic because it's a layer. I still want to see through now, it. Now when you say you're scratching it, you're using the back of a paintbrush, so that isn't actually going to scratch the plastic. What if you use like a metal pick or something and really scratch the plastic? Would that be okay? It would be even better. I would do both. Why not? Okay. Okay. So once this dries, I'll add a little bit more dimension by adding some number rub-ons. Super easy to do. I'll just cut one out and show you. Okay, ya. so I grew up in a time before computers, <laughs> or at the, the dawn of computers, I was at the beginning of the like the home computer, and I remember rub-ons. I use them for all kinds of school projects oh, I love them. where I need to do the lettering on the front of it or anything like that, and it's so much fun. It is, and it's easy to add a nice design. And I like that you can always see sort of what you're putting down. Mm -hmm. very so you cool. can see very simple layer, and then I'll finish off my top layer. Remember, I cut a, a piece for mm -hmm. the cover. And I do want to point something out. We talked about whether or not to remove the plastic before you cut, and I noticed you didn't on this one partially because now you can and write right. on That's it right. what it is. That's right. And so with this top layer, all I did was I just took some art spray. You can actually, I'll peel this off to show you. You can um, add some You're just some using on an there. acrylic spray ink that has like a gold mica powder in it. That's right. And I'm going to take some of that and I'm going to use that sponge again. You mm -hmm. don't see the the uh, the stencil that much, right. but it's there. Trust me. Once and I, you I was going to say, I just want to point out the difference between these two is A, this paint is dry, and B, this one That's still right. has a protective covering on the mm -hmm. other side because That's there right. is plastic on both sides, whereas that one has it off of both sides. That's right. And now you're using spray ink the way that nobody intended. Oh, by I love it. I love it. I love it. Out <laughs> and using it. That's so right. So let's take a peek at the finished pieces and just talk to us a little bit about how you put them together. Sure. I mean, so all of the components now can easily be, be glued into the box. You just layer them with adhesive, add some trim to the sides, and you're done. Nice, it's easy so project. Easy. Yeah. I love it. Thank you, Kat. Thank you. And who can't use a little more time?